I thought I'd start by telling you a little bit about Mission Australia, um, just about how big and diverse it is. And uh, d as David Rick Rick Rickard said earlier, we're a non-linear, non operationally complex organisation. I quite like that. Um, but we work across five what we call pathways, and they're pathways to a, to a, a better life, um, a fairer Australia. And the pathways are, are uh, in the areas of families, which is the yellow one at the top, youth, um, homelessness, so our uh, housing business fits in there, skills and uh, learning and employment, which is a big part of the business. Um, we operate across 500 sites, um, manage over 500 different contracts. Um, we helped more than 300,000 people last year. Um, and it is an incredibly complex organisation from that point of view, although um, compared to when I got there about seven years ago, it's a whole lot easier to understand than it was then. So, you know, things must be improving. So in our um, children and families services uh, thing, we operated across 124 services. Now, some of those things are childcare centres, some of them are um, uh, working with um, families at risk of, uh, in the child protection system, all sorts of child and family, uh, community development sorts of projects, um, a range of youth projects that work with um, uh, young people who are at risk of entering, um, uh, entering the justice system or, uh, or re-entering the justice system or at risk of leaving school and education, homelessness and um, housing. Uh, life and work ready skills. We, we do a lot of work with uh, language literacy and numeracy programs and things like that. Um, and Employment Solutions says that it's 10 programs, but that's operating across um, a very large number of sites. But because it's a, it's a federally funded thing, it's a, a very uh, tight program in how it's described. So it is complex, it's a bit messy. Um, and I think we operate about 300 di 350 different programs. So, so, so although there are 500 contracts, some of them are sort of doing much the same thing. But we have a really clear vision across all of those, and it's the vision of the organisation, apart from having a social justice vision about Fair Australia, it's about transformation of lives. And you may have seen some of the um, ads that we're not running, in, running anymore, but we had a lot of these ones uh, a couple of years ago where people were in that process of transformation and it involved butterfly wings and people are building them. I quite like these ones, but I'm a bit sad we're not using them. Um, but in, in the bit about transformation is actually really important about what we do. So we, as a rule, don't do crisis type stuff anymore. C certainly when we were the city missions years ago, we used to do a lot of that crisis, particularly in homelessness. We've progressively moved out of that and gone to a, a sort of business, a, an assistance where we help people get out of homelessness, basically. We decided we'd rather do that than, um, than just make sure they were safe for the night. So in a lot of the things we do, it, it is about that transformation and we try to work in that space. Um, so really it should matter to us and it does matter to us whether we are getting those outcomes, whether we actually are helping people transform their lives. The difficulty is in how you work out whether you're doing that and how you work it out across all those programs. Um, so some of the things we have been doing really well, we do um, at the service level, so at the sort of the level where contracts lie, we have done some fantastic evaluations and um, some of you will have seen last year a report that we put out about a project called the Michael Project which was working with um, chronically homeless men where we in intensified the level of support. We had a very generous donor who's uh, assisted us with over $5 million over a number of years to trial this model. Um, and so we did, a, uh, running alongside that, we did a big cost-benefit analysis um, to look at what was the impact for government on uh, trying this new approach. Actually, it saved about $6,000 a year per client, um, but also had important health and wellbeing benefits for the clients um, and certainly got a lot of them out of um, homelessness. So we know that we can do those sorts of things. We also know that they're very expensive. We spent tens of thousands, if not uh, over 100,000 on that uh, evaluation, but it was uh, one that we've uh, used to great effect in for advocacy purposes. Not, not just to improve our business, but actually to inform um, public policy. Um, and then in each of those pathways, we have mapped up some of the, 
outcomes. Um, so we do, well, we've mapped up the outcomes that we want to achieve. If we want to achieve a fairer Australia, we have to know that at the bottom level, where the, the grey is, that those service level outcomes, so we know for each service what we want it to be doing in a homelessness service, then we expect that to be working on, um, working with those clients to help them move out of homelessness, for instance. And we want to know that what it contributes to in uh, community level outcomes, which are the sort of darker green ones, so that we know that young people are healthy, safe, developing and achieving, connected and participating, experiencing wellbeing and appropriately housed, and that communities are inclusive and cohesive, supported and resourced. So we have a logic about how we move up from um, program logics at a service level to um, the what we call outcomes hierarchies in each of the in each of the pathways. So we're sort of fairly clear on that sort of stuff. But we are big, um, and there is a lot of complexity. What we, what we found that we had was at, at, at the service level, we were able to report to government. And over the last um, five to six years, we have built a lot of administrative databases. So we have five large databases about our clients that tell us um, everything we need to know about the client in order to be able to man case manage, because uh, pre predominantly we work in a case management framework. So to be able to work with them and to be able to report that to government to meet all our compliance and reporting requirements, but also to help our frontline staff actually do their job so that they can they get a better view of what they're doing with their clients. So we have all that stuff. But what we don't have is visibility that allows us to build up from the um, from the service level all the way up to where the board or the executive leadership team is looking and going, what's working, what isn't working? So we've struggled with that bit because what they can't do is look at 500 individual reports every quarter and go, well, that program over there is working and that one's not because they're all different. What we can tell whether we've met the reporting requirement to government and every government funder knows whether we're meeting that requirement. But from a point of view of the whole organisation, are we doing it? Actually don't know that stuff. And we're not able to compare. So at the moment, if, I, uh, if we um, got somebody sort of gave us $20 million and said, do something with this, we wouldn't know which bit of our business to invest it in so that we would know that we were going to get the very best client outcomes we could, that we're going to make a difference that was going to help more people transform their lives more effectively. So we don't know some of that sort of stuff. So our, our problem is to work out how we do that. So that we can then make, so that the board and the executive leadership team can make uh, strategic decisions about what's best value. So, briefly, what we've done, or in the process of setting up, and my job is to be the the facilitator of all this, which is sort of fairly exciting but also fairly daunting. We're setting up a committee of our board. What our board has always had a board audit risk committee that looks at the finances. We're all over the finances. If there's one thing that works in a large, complex organisation, it's the finance system. <laughs> and you can get a financial report on just about anything, and you can cut that any way you like. So we're very good at that. Um, and the board is all over that stuff. What we don't have, though, is, is the ability for them to ask the right questions of the service delivery bit to actually know whether um, we're doing the right thing at all. I mean, are we actually helping people who are actually making their lives worse? They've got no way of telling some of that stuff. So they're setting up a, a committee that will look at um, service quality, service impact, and, and all these sorts of things. And because a lot of our board comes from the corporate world, are people who are very good at um, understanding how a, a for-profit business works, they actually don't know some of the right questions to ask, um, and they're certainly not skilled in impact measurement. So what they've decided to do is to have six people on this committee, three of them will be from the Mission Australia board, and to bring in three people externally who have expertise in this area that can help the board um, frame up some of the things that they might want to know and to help them get that. Now that's all very well, the board sitting saying we want to know the answer to everything, and as quite a few people have asked before, what's the cost of knowing the answer to everything? Um, the other part of my job will be to work with various service delivery arms of the organisation to say, this is the information the board is asking for, this is the information you could deliver, what's the cost of you delivering that or that, and to report that back to the board so that the board can then make a decision about, well, you may want to know the answer to that, but that's going to cost you $10 million. 
Will you get $10 million worth of value out of that? So I'm, quite, I'm excited about this um, challenge and the opportunities and the things that I am concerned about, those challenges there, is about the change that will occur in the organisation. If I look at all the KPIs that go up to the board at the moment, with one exception, they are financial KPIs or occupancy rates or something like that, something that actually doesn't tell you much about the business. Um, the one exception is in the Employment ser uh, uh, Job Services Australia contract, which does have an outcome measure in there, or there's two outcome measures, and they're about um, uh, jobs, uh, uh, jobs that we have got for people and that they have stayed on. There's an employment outcome, and the reason we report on that is because there's a payment attached to that. <laughs> I suppose that's not funny, but, um, <laughs> but it is. <laughs> but it goes back to that thing that a number of people have said, if you... If you, uh, if you, now I'm going to get this wrong, but you've got, if you measure it, you'll do it. You know, like it's really important to us that we get employment outcomes for people in the employment services business because it's important that they get jobs, but more, more importantly, one of the drivers is that we get paid for it. So that's a really important thing that every manager in employment gets held to account for because it actually really matters to the functioning of the business. So it's important for, It'll be important that we set um, that we set in, uh, things that they have to report on that are actually going to tell us something about the business that are actually meaningful the client for the clients and it go right back to that vision thing of are we helping people transform their lives? A few other problems in that around clarity, um, measuring whether our clients have achieved uh, um, whether their lives have improved can be a bit tricky. Um, and, but we have piloted a health and wellbeing tool that may help us assist with that. So we we could actually apply that across all of our service streams with all of our clients through the normal service delivery to do a, a, a thing that where we might do a before and after distance travelled type thing. That's one of the ideas that we're exploring. We don't know the cost to that yet or how feasible it is, but uh, we're certainly looking at it. But the other problem with clarity is we don't know how much of that was because of something we did or because of something the clients took control of and whether we enabled that or uh, helped it. But the thing I have uh, said a number of times in Mission Australia, we're not going to get this 100% right. If we wait until we've got it 100% right, we'll never do it. So we're best to sort of start stumbling down this path, get it about 80% right and then keep working on it. And I don't think there's, a, there's no end point in impact measurement where we go, right, that's it, we don't have to worry about this anymore. It's a, it's a, a process of continual learning. And I think for the organisation and the board, that's going to be a pretty exciting journey. So I'm going to hand over now to Mark, who's going to talk about complexity in PwC.